Good week, boys and girls. I'm so glad you came back for a week four of our 10 for life study. It is so important that we learn scripture. And so I hope that you are having fun, that you're trying to memorize these throughout the week. Maybe during your dinner time, you can go over them with someone at your dinner table. But I'm gonna see if you remember them. Now, first I wanna tell you, Miss Stevie has learned these verses in different versions. So we have diversions of the Bible, different versions. And so sometimes it's the same meaning, but it's not always the same wording. So you'll have to bear with me because sometimes my brain doesn't want to do that. But let's see if we can remember the, at least the meaning part of each one of our verse. Week, for, week one, first week, we did Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Depend not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I don't think those are the exact words that you learned, but it is in there if you find it. So that's the first one. Week two was John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Do you remember that one? That is a really important one. And then last week, week three, we had 2 Chronicles 7.14. And that says, if my people who are called by my name, now they're going to do four things. Do you remember the four things? Will humble themselves pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will, there's three things he will do, he will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land, right? And my kids kept saying, kiss their boo-boos, but we know that God heals our land when we do that. And so this week, we're going to be learning another one. And I want you to think, if you go on a long vacation, do you think it's wise for your mom and dad to say, ah, I bet we can get there on this little bit of gas and then it, the tank just keeps going more and more and more empty do you think that's wise or do you think should, they should pull over and get some gas we went to Virginia one time and we were getting low on gas but we were kind of on some back roads and we were getting scared where is the gas station we don't want to run out of gas with our whole family and just sitting on the side of the road well, in our Christian walk, we don't want to run out of gas during our Christian walk either. There are some things that we need to do to keep our Christian walk close to God and on fire for Him at all times. And so we need to make sure that we are giving ourselves enough fuel so that we can get through this thing called life. And so stay with us today. Let's learn all about what God wants us to do to stay fueled. Are you ready to start? Let's go. Live from 10th Avenue in New York City, it's The Tin Show with Max Montgomery. And now, here's your host, Max Montgomery. Hey, hey! Woo! Yeah! Come on, let me hear an audience! So, oh, hey! <laughs> and? All right, all right, welcome everybody to The Ten Show, the show where we celebrate the number... Ten! That's right, the number ten. I think there may have been about ten gallons of rain that was dumped on me as I was coming in from the car, but I don't want to talk about that right now. I want to get into the show, so let's hear it for Boffo and The Ten Show Band! All right, ladies and gentlemen, Boffo and the Tin Show Band. All right. Oh, Boffo, I got to tell you, you really know how to get down. I know how to what? Get down. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 Boffo, no. I, I was saying you know how to get down, you know, like dance. Oh, yeah. I do know how to slice a carpet. <laughs> I, I think you mean cut a rug. That's what I said. I see. Well, since we're speaking of dancing, I think we ought to jump right into tonight's top 10 list. <laughs> well, the top 10 list category today is Boffo's top 10 dance moves. Are you ready to show them to us, Boffo? 
Oh yeah, I'm ready to do, as the kids say, get jiggy with it. Okay, I'm gonna list them off, and then Boffo's gonna demonstrate them for us. Here we go. Boffo's top 10 dance moves. Number 10, the lawnmower. Number nine, the robot. Number eight, the funky chicken. Number seven, the crazy dingo. Number six, the silly ostrich. Number five, the leaping platypus. Number four, the slobbering hamster. Number three, the hopping zebra. Number two, the sneezing monkey. And Bafo's number one dance move, the sleeping bear. <laughs> and that's our top 10 list! That is our top 10 list, everybody. Listen, we have an amazing show for you, but as always, I want you to pay attention to this commercial break from one of our sponsors. What's up, everybody? My name is Wiggy, Wiggy Pop. <laughs> and I bet I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Wiggy, how do I get my hair so rocking like yours? Well, I'll tell you, if you come on down to Wiggy's Wig Emporium and Pet Grooming Salon. That's right, at Wiggy's Wig Emporium and Pet Grooming Salon, we'll shave your pet weave the hair back into a wig, and you get to wear it. It doesn't matter what kind of pet it is. Dogs, cats, horses, you name it, we'll shave it. Just listen to some of our happy customers. I got my wig from my dog, Samson. He already had a ton of hair, and it grows back pretty quick. He wasn't gonna miss it anyway. Thanks to all 10 of my guinea pigs, I've got all the confidence that I need. Thanks, Wiggy. No, thank you. So come on down to Wiggy's Wig Emporium and Pet Grooming Salon, where I'm not just the founder, I'm also a client, thanks to my good buddy, Patches. <coughs> Wiggy's Wig Emporium and Pet Grooming Salon. We'll see you here. I mean, there. All right, welcome back everybody. Thanks to Wiggy's Wig Emporium and Pet Grooming Salon for sponsoring today's show. And it is a doozy. I have a big guest on today. Big? Hey, if he's that, if he's that big, maybe he should go on a diet. No, Buffo, <laughs> not that kind of big. I mean, he's a big star. And he's a big trucker. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the 10 show, Big Papa. Oh yeah. Yeah, how y'all doing? There we go. How hey, you doing? How you doing, sir? Hey. A Harry Houdini's hot pot of coffee. How are you doing, sir? Welcome, Big Papa. I am glad you're here on the show today. I'm glad to be here, Max. I drove over 10,000 miles, over 10 hours, just to be here on the 10 show. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I heard you have a crazy story to tell us about time that you spent on the highway. Oh, we don't call it the highway, Max. That's for city slickers. Us truckers call it the asphalt paradise. <laughs> gotcha. Well. Tell us what happened. 
Well, see, I got this real fancy rig. That's what us truckers call our truck or rig. And it has this option where you have this fancy computer screen that tells you where you're going. And one of the options is it can tell you how many miles you can drive before you run out of gas. Well, that's pretty cool. I tell you what, it was a long drive through the desert. I was hauling 10 Hummers down to an auto dealership in Phoenix, Arizona. And my little light started blinking on the screen. I looked down and said, oh, I'm almost out of gas, but I got to keep going. I got 80 miles left. And I saw a gas station coming up on the side of the road. I thought, that's not for me. I'm just going to keep on keeping on. No, oh, I don't blame you. About half an hour later, I saw another gas station. I looked down at the screen and said, I ain't stopping, I'm Big Papa. I got 40 miles left, no stopping for me. Wow. 10 miles later, I still had 30 miles left on my gas tank and there was another gas station right there, but I just kept going. Another 10 miles, there was another gas station, but it was on the other side of the road and I wouldn't want to waste all that time going across the overpass to get to that gas station. So I just kept on a going. Uh-oh, I think I see where this is going. Right then and there, something real peculiar started to happen. I looked down at the screen and instead of 20, there, it, it was blank. There were no numbers at all. I started tapping on the computer saying, this is ridiculous. What kind of crazy <laughs> truck quits telling you how much gas you got left after 20 miles? Right then and there, I decided, next gas station, I better stop. Oh, well, I think that was a good idea. There was just one problem. As far as I could see, there were no exits anywhere for any kind of gas station. And I thought I was just gonna run out of gas in the middle of nowhere. So I decided, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put my pedal to the metal, go as fast as I can. That way, if I run out of gas, I'll coast to the next exit. So there I was, just rocketing down the highway, going as fast as I could. Oh no! Just as I was about to give up all hope, I saw it. Shining like a beacon at the end of the road, an exit to a gas station. I floored it, hoping I wouldn't run out of gas before I got there, and I made it. Whew! I filled my gas tank all the way to the tippy top. I managed to drive it all the way down to flat zero empty. I was pretty proud of myself. Oh, well that was a close one. As I headed back onto the open road, I started thinking to myself, I said, Big Papa, that was downright silly of you. If you'd run out of gas, you would have lost all that time you were saving by not stopping anywhere. And I would have had to walk through the desert to get some gas while my truck just sat there all sad and lonely. That's true. That wasn't a very smart thing to do. No, it wasn't. But you know something, Max? What's that, Big Papa? What's sad is that some people do the same thing with their lives as a Christian. They just barrel on down the highway of life while their, their spiritual gas tank goes on empty. They haven't prayed in weeks, they haven't read the Bible in months, and they haven't talked to God since they can remember. Wow, so our spiritual lives are running on empty. Exactly. And we wonder why we feel so frustrated and weak. Why it's because we're always so busy blowing and going down the highway of life that we totally forget about God. We need to slow down, get in His presence, and refill our spiritual fuel tank. Wow, Big Papa. You know, that reminds me of this week's verse. You know, we've been memorizing 10 scriptures for our life. We've been calling it 10 for life. And today's scripture has a lot to do with what we're learning. Today's scripture is... Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. <laughs> that is one doozy of a verse. It sure is. And kids, it teaches us exactly what we need to learn. We need to slow down, get in God's presence and wait on Him. Then He will fill our spiritual fuel tank and give us the strength we need to barrel on down the highway of life. You betcha. And that brings us to today's big idea. Today's big idea says, if I wait on the Lord, I will find new strength. So 
Every time today that you hear this sound, hey, what's the big idea? Stand up and say it with us. If I wait on the Lord, I will find new strength. And that's today's big idea. I sure do love those big ideas because I'm Big Papa. That's true. Well, Big Papa, it was a pleasure having you on the Tin Show today. I sure did love it, Max. You and Bafo are two of my favorite people. Oh, shucks. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, kids, it's all the time we have for our show today. So tune in next time as we continue learning 10 scriptures that will change our life. And we're calling it 10 for Life right here on the 10 Show. We'll see you later, everybody. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You guys, I don't have time. I don't have, Record, referee Ricky right here. I just wanted to stop in and say hi, but I don't really have time. I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get going. I have, I have people, uh, things to, to do, people to, to see, um, places to go. I don't have, I don't have a lot of time. So I hope you're, you're, you're buckled in because I gotta get this said and done. What, why, why am I in a hurry? Wait, wait, hello, listen up. I said I don't have time to chit chat with you. I don't have time for today's lesson. I don't have time for that. I am super busy. Do you know that football season is coming up? Oh my goodness, we're doing training and we're doing this and we're doing that and you know, I just, I, what? No, no, I don't have time. I don't, I can't give you a report on cramp. You know, my, my meeting, my Christian referees are magnificent people. Well, I don't even have time to go to the meeting. I haven't been, I, I, probably two weeks because I've got to read all the rule books. The NFL's changing some things, I think. I haven't even understood things. I don't know. I just don't have time. Like, I am working really hard trying to get everything ready. They've even cut it down to only two preseason games. I can't even get my crew together. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't even, I don't even have time. I didn't even have time to visit, visit and do any of the Bible studies this morning because I have things to see, people to go, and places to do. Well, I don't, I don't have time for your corrections. I know I didn't say it right. Never correct a referee anyway, that's in a hurry. I know what some of you might be saying. It is a little dangerous to be in such a hurry when you don't have time to study the Bible. I know, I know, dangerous though, I mean, come on. There's a lot of times that I get so busy that I can't study the Bible or pray or go to church. I, I just gotta keep going. I mean, this is really important time of the year. Do you, football is starting in like less than two months. I gotta get going. You know what? Don't even talk about me, talk about it. I, burnout, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I don't even like that word. I don't have time for burnout. You know what? I, got, I gotta go. Just, just watch the rest of the session. I, I gotta go. What do you want, Dr. Boy? I'm trying to be patient here. What are you doing? Are you waiting on the bus? No, I heard somewhere once that if you wait, you will be strong. I'm waiting because I want to be strong and handsome. Oh, you must be referring to today's power boss. Kids, today's power boss says, but those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. That is exactly what I had heard. Yes. I don't know where, but I had heard it before. If I wait, I will be strong. That is very true. That is very true, Dr. Vaughn. I tell you what. Do you think maybe you can get the girls to help you say it with you? Yes. Girls, if you want to be strong, you have to wait. But don't wait right now. Stand to your feet yes. and let's say it together. Stand up. One, <laughs> or two, <laughs> or three. <laughs> but those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run but not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Well, the girls are mighty, mighty strong. I can tell by their vocal cords. Oh, they were very nice, but boys, I know you're much stronger than the girls, so stand up. We're going to say the powers together on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. But those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. 
They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. That was a superb job. Do you like how I said the word superb? Do you know what that is superb? Well, I'll tell you what that is superb. What? When the boys and the girls stand to their feet and stand together. Yes, On the count of three. Yes. One. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. But those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Wonderful job, everyone. That's very good. Yes, this is very good. Very good. Well, you may sit down. Until next time, I'm Dr. Boing. Hey, I'm Dr. Von Hickelsnap. <laughs> Toodles. Sit down for me. <laughs> Boys and girls, I have a little bit of apologizing to do. I really messed that up. Now that I've listened to the doctors talk about the scripture verse and all that kind of stuff, I, I, I've realized that if I, if I try to go on and on and go on in life without stopping to take time to read God's word and to be in his presence, I'm going to run out of strength eventually, aren't I? I can't live like that forever. I have to slow down. I have to spend time with God. I need to really be paying attention. I can't, I can't renew my strength if, if I don't know Him and read His Word. Otherwise, I run the risk of that word, that burnout. I really do run that risk. And I tell you what, that power verse really spoke to my heart. It really spoke to me just like... The verse said, waiting on God actually gives me strength. I've always thought that was just something that, that slowed me down, like, you know, reading the Bible. How boring sometimes. I didn't know that it was something real. I should have realized that I can't do it without God. It's in God's presence that we find new strength. He fills us with the strength that we need to do the things that He's called us to do, and that includes me being a referee. I'm not going to do my best out there on the field, calling fouls, calling penalties, whatever. I'm not going to be able to do that if, if I'm not renewed by God. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I was set straight. I, am all, I almost made a huge mistake. I'm not going to keep going full steam ahead so much that I ignore God's presence again. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I, I think I'm going to slow down and wait for God. I think I think I might even start by memorizing this verse. Would you guys like to help me memorize this verse? Let's, let's do it. So it says, they, those who wait, like a time clock, those who wait on the Lord will find new strength, right? They will fly, right, on wings like eagles. Okay, just point up for eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint, right? And that is Isaiah 40, 31. I'm gonna go through that a couple times with you and then I might just do the motions and see if you remember it. Do you know? Let's start again. But those who wait upon the Lord will find new strength. Make sure I get in here. Will find new strength. They will fly on wings like eagles, okay? They will run and not grow weary. They will walk, show me your strut. They will walk and not faint. Got it? Let's try it one more time. But those who wait upon the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high with wings like an eagle, on wings like an eagle. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk. Show me your strut. They will walk and not faint. Faint means you just fall out like you're asleep. I'm going to leave some think words out. You see if you can say it. Those who will find new, they will fly high on like, they will and not grow weary, they will and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. I'm going to leave a few more words out. Can you do it? Ready? But those who will find new, they will 
they will and not they will and not all right I'm gonna say it and you do the motions but those who wait upon the Lord will find new strength they will fly high on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint Isaiah 40 31 I'd love to see your video send it to me it's time to learn today's lesson are you guys ready Ha! You thought I was gone, huh? Waiting. Man, it's something that none of us like to do. Waiting is one of the hardest things to do. Have you ever been in a doctor's office and had to sit in the waiting room? Isn't that the most boring thing ever? Or maybe you've been in line with your mom or dad at the bank and had to wait forever for your turn to come up. Even worse is grocery shopping. Seems to take forever as your mom's picking out all the flour and eggs and milk and whatever else she has to buy. But the worst waiting of all is when your mom says to you, you just have to wait until your dad gets home. He's going to take care of your punishment. Oh man, that seems to take forever. You're just waiting and waiting. Oh, it can be so painful. Waiting can be one of the hardest things in life to do. And that's why when a lot of people read our power verse today, they get very confused. But those who wait on the Lord, people hear what they think they want and they or they hear that and they think no way I don't want to wait waiting is boring they have the idea that God wants us to just sit in a corner and stare at the wall until he tells us something to do until it's time to get up what's number one say waiting on God is not boring the word wait in our power verse is not talking about boring kind of waiting it's talking about slowing down getting in God's presence this might be at church or at home, in the car, wherever. It doesn't matter where you choose to be in God's presence because God is everywhere. Waiting on God in this verse is much like waiting for Christmas. It's not boring to wait for Christmas. It's a wait full of anticipation and excitement. You know how it is when you see a big gift with your name on it under the Christmas tree? You're just filled with excitement as you get closer and closer to Christmas. It's not a boring wait. It's actually a really exciting wait. It's a wait that you actually enjoy because you know that something amazing is going to happen. Well, there is something amazing that happens when we wait on God and spend time in His presence too. Let's read this slide together. It says, when I wait on God, I get stronger. Oh my goodness, show me your muscles. Look at those strong muscles. Our power verse says today that when we wait on God, we will find new strength. So many people don't understand that they need to regularly spend time with God in prayer, worship, etc. It's in those times that when we slow down from the busyness of life and let God give us new strength, that we can keep going. Do you know a toy that needs a charger? It's a lot of fun to play with, but the batteries aren't made to last forever. And after a while, the batteries get low and eventually they die. And so you need to either charge the batteries or get new batteries. So what do you need in order to be able to play with the toy again? You're right. You have to plug it into the power charger. And it takes a while, if you wanna, if you, but if you wait a long enough time, the battery will be recharged, and you'll go back to playing with that toy. The same thing is true for us. When we slow down and get in God's presence and wait on Him, plugging into Him, then He fills us up with an amazing supernatural strength. He gives us strength to go on. And if we choose not to slow down and plug into him, we will suffer the same fate as a rechargeable toy that was not plugged in. We'll wear down and become useless. That's why it's so important to wait on the Lord and find new strength. What does the rest of the verse say? Those who wait on the Lord and find new strength will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not, f not faint. So what does that mean for us? What does this slide say? With God's strength, I will do great things. When we find new strength from spending time with God, we can do greater things for Him. We may not literally fly in the sky like with eagles, but we will definitely soar to new heights with God. He will take us further and higher than we could ever imagine. 
But we can't do it on our own. If we try to do it in our own strength, we're going to fail. However, if we'll slow down, wait on God, we will find new strength that we need to make it through every tough time, every hard spot, and every challenge we face. And boys and girls, that is worth the wait. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining us today. I hope that you've learned that when we wait upon God, when we sit at His feet, when we learn from Him, we will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint. Such an important, important scripture for us to remember. And so when you're going out this week, don't forget to start your week off reading your Bibles, pray throughout the week, and give yourself strength. Let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you for each boy and girl that came today to listen to your word, to tune in and to know and to memorize those scriptures. And so we pray that you would help them to wait upon you. That when we do that, Lord, that you give us strength and power, that you make sure that we are not weary, that we will not not faint, that we will have the strength to do everything you have called us to do. And so we are thankful for that. And we pray that each one of these kids and parents that could be watching, that they will renew their minds with you each and every day, that they will come to you and be refreshed each and every day, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, guys, we'll see you then. your best friend, baby. It's Skittles here to wrap it up. Yes, I am. Come on. Yeah. Moving right along, going way too fast. You better slow down before you run out of gas. Get in God's presence, then you gotta wait. Better spend time with Him before it's too late. When you wait upon the Lord, you will see. You'll begin to soar on eagle's wings. You'll do God's will. You'll go to great lengths. If you wait on the Lord, you'll find new strength. Baby, that's right, man. You know that if you just wait in God's presence, He'll give you the strength you need to make it through your life. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my Savior. Skittles out, baby. Yeah.